all, nearly a half a million immigrants traveled over the Oregon Trail. Thousands passed right through here, past Flagstaff Hill. We're today, thousands more discovering that journey for themselves. Here at the Bureau of Land Management's National Historic Oregon Trail Interpretive Center, just outside of Baker City, Oregon. Inside, the drama of life on the trail has been beautifully recreated. These wagons, they are a piece of work. Fine oak and maple mine is. I forged the iron fittings myself last February. Made them pretty light, too. I am proud of William's work on our wagon. It's carrying our household and all the way to Oregon for us. Oh, Sam, let's go, let's go. By the mid 1800s, a fledgling United States of America was looking west toward wide open spaces and new opportunities. Regardless of their reasons, the trickle of immigrants that started in 1841 had become a flood by 45. And every family needed an outfit. A good team of oxen or mules was essential, as was a wagon sturdy enough to carry food and equipment, and of course, family treasures. On an unknown, largely uncharted six month journey, across prairies, rivers, mountains, and who knew what other perils, to the land of milk and honey called Oregon. Space was limited, and what to take and what to leave behind was a decision many families found difficult to make. The guidebook says very few cooking utensils should be taken, as they very much increase the load, to avoid which is always a consideration of paramount importance. A baking kettle, Frying pan, tea kettle, teapot, and coffee pot are all that are essential. Tin plates, tin cups, ordinary knives, forks, spoons. One way or another, wagons were finally packed. Groups formed into wagon trains. Captains or wagon masters were elected or hired. And the immigrants were off on a great but treacherous journey. May 22nd, we leave Independence, Missouri for the frontier. Our company numbers about 40 wagons, and I believe we will have sufficient manpower for whatever may lie before us. The Way West was dotted with landmarks to guide the travelers. These natural monuments provided moments of wonder in otherwise tedious days of ordeal, normally punctuated only by the endless repetition of daily chores. Appearing on the horizon, they were an especially welcome and reassuring sight. For as they emerged from a distant, hazy horizon, slowly defining themselves in sharp detail as they grew closer, finally towering above as the wagons lumbered by at an average speed of two miles an hour, they sent a signal that you were all right, confirming that you were still on your trail to Oregon. Crossing the country without a road to follow had its perils. There were windstorms, choking dust, and many dangers involved in crossing rivers. Now remember, this riverbed lies like snowdrifts, and we chance to encounter deep water. It hides unseen currents and whirlpools, so take caution. Ready, Lee? This is the last of our coking tar and we must soon find pine tree pitch to waterproof our wagons. Rain all day. I froze or chilled my feet so that I cannot wear a shoe. So I have to go around in the cold water in my bare feet. Five long months and 13 days from Independence, Missouri, we have reached our destination, Oregon City. Civilization is a welcome sight. As the Oregon Trail continued to funnel pioneers westward, their stories gave way to tales of the settlement of the great American West. And the Interpretive Center tells some of these as well. Native Americans occupied these lands long before the coming of the white man. I do not know the meaning of so many white people coming here. They do not know the land as we do. 
and some of them are not strong. I see so many come at once in their long wagon train. Some who came west seeking their fortunes found it in the gold and silver mines. But more often, the real fortunes were made by those who provided tools and grew food to sell to the miners. This exhibit explains the importance of mining and agriculture in the settlement of northeastern Oregon. And just outside, the visitor can get a close-up look at the real thing. This is a fully recreated hard rock mine where from time to time, our living history volunteers complete the picture of what a working mine was really like. Remains of the original Flagstaff mine, typical of many gold mines in the region, are still visible. It's part of an extensive trail system which allows visitors a chance to bring their experiences from inside the center, outside where it really happened. Few changes have occurred here in the 150 years since wagon trains first made their mark upon the land. Looking over the Baker Valley toward the Blue Mountains, it's not hard at all to imagine yourself alone on the great frontier and feel a part of the dream that settled this vast Oregon territory all those years ago. <laughs>